Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So this week I finally got my M3 Pro MacBook Pro and I got right into testing the M3 Pro versus the M3 Max. And so this video, I plan to go over some of the performance differences I saw as well as some gaming differences. And then uh, lastly, some battery life differences. Before we jump in, I wanna make it clear that the M3 Pro is the lowest unbin chip. And that comes with 12 CPU cores, 6P and 6E, 18 GPU cores, 18 gigabytes of RAM, with a starting price of 2500 however the one i'm using today has uh, a one terabyte ssd and that is starting at 2700 dollars well the m3 max that i'm using today is also the lowest unbin chip it comes with 16 cores 12 of which are p and four of which are e 40 gpu cores 48 gigabytes of ram and also comes with a one terabyte ssd and a starting price of four thousand dollars all right so with that out of the way let's get started with some physical differences um in terms of physical differences there's actually not very many both have upgraded displays and they're both going to be having 600 nits of peak brightness in SDR, still claiming 1600 nits of peak brightness in HDR. Now that SDR is about 20% brighter than the last gen. Both still have 120 hertz screens and then the keyboards and trackpads are the same. In terms of ports, both have the exact same layout, a MagSafe connector, two Thunderbolt ports, and a high fidelity headphone jack on the left side, as well as a HDMI 2.1 and then another Thunderbolt, as well as a SD card reader on the right side. However, the M3 Pro supports only two external displays, while the M3 Max can support up to four. If you're looking for a laptop that can run more than two displays, you might be stuck with the M3 Max chip. All right, so let's get into some performance testing. Wait, wait, uh, real quick, if you guys are watching this between December 1st and December 14th, uh, there's a charity Jingle Jam by Tiltify and by the Yogscast. Uh, I have my own little campaign going on with them. If you guys could go and check it out, it is 70 games. Uh, for 35 pounds or about 45 US dollars. I have a link for it in the description. Please go check it out. I think you guys will really like it. All right, back to the video. So the first test I did was the Blackmagic speed test. And here I saw really no differences between the chips. They both have one terabyte of storage and they performed identically. So now let's get into some Geekbench scores. So the single core uh, was pretty much the same, about a 4% difference, but that's nothing crazy. Uh, Multi-core scores, however, the M3 Max scored 37% higher, and in terms of the GPU, the Metal score, it scored 95% higher than the Pro chips. And then with OpenCL, it scored 82% higher. Uh, the second performance test I ran was Cinebench 2024, where once again, the Pro chip had a slight lead in single core performance, but nothing that big, while the multi-core score had the Max chip at 57% faster than the Pro chip. And for the GPU, the Max chip had a score that was 115% higher than the Pro chip. And the last synthetic test I ran was NovaBench, where the scores were 47% higher and 118% higher for the Max chip in CPU and GPU respectively. So with synthetic performance tests out of the way, I wanted to see more of a real life example of what this chip could do. And so what came to my mind was doing a render. So I did a five-ish minute 4K 60 FPS render of a SDR video in Final Cut Pro. This was actually my Steam Deck announcement video. I exported that in HVC 10-bit. It took the Pro chip about six minutes and 11 seconds to export the video, whereas it took the Max chip about three minutes and 18 seconds. That's quite a bit in terms of performance. We're talking about almost half the amount of time to export a video. With kind of those performance sets out of the way, I wanted to see some gaming next. And I know what you're gonna say, Macs aren't for gaming, but things do seem to be changing, especially when you look at this first game we're gonna look at, which is Baldur's Gate 3. All right, so Baldur's Gate 3 is a native Apple Silicon game, and I tested it on ultra settings at three different resolutions uh, with FSR off. And during the test, I walked around a busy part of Act 3. And if you didn't know, Act 3 is the more challenging part of the game to run. Uh, the Pro chip was able to give a decent playable experience at 1080p and 1440p, while the Max chip was able to give a playable experience across the board, sometimes producing over over double the amount of frames as the Pro chip. We're talking about 4K 38 FPS average. Pretty impressive for a laptop. So after Baldur's Gate 3, I wanted to see how a native Mac OS game, but a non-native Apple Silicon game ran on these chips. And so I ended up using Shadow of the Tomb Raider running through Rosetta. During this test, I had the highest settings preset enabled, except I went ahead and turned motion blur off. I also had HDR off. So once again, uh, the Pro chip was able to give playable frame rates at 1080p and 1440p, while the Max chip was able to do playable frame rates across the board and was giving about 120% more performance across all three resolutions. And the last game I ran was a non-native Mac OS game, 
uh, which is running through Crossover. And if you don't know what Crossover is, it's a program that's based on Wine and allows you to run some Windows applications on Mac OS. I'll have a link in the description if you wanna learn more about Crossover. But anyways, the game I ended up using was Horizon Zero Dawn. With no upscaling, all the settings maxed out except for motion blur off, and the results were pretty similar to what we've seen so far. The Pro Chip playable at 1080p and 1440p, while the Max Chip was playable across the board and overall had about double the performance. However, in this situation, the Pro Chip couldn't run 4K, it crashed every time using the benchmark. Okay, so performance done. As we've seen, the M3 Max is a lot more powerful than the M3 Pro, about double in terms of graphics performance, and that's expected from 18 GPU cores to 40 GPU cores. But I also wanted to see how that affected battery life. So the battery life test I ended up doing was a 4K YouTube video with the MacBooks running in low power mode, max brightness, 50% volume, as well as the keyboard backlight off. And the M3 Pro lasted nine hours and 47 minutes, while the M3 Max lasted eight hours and 25 minutes. That is about a 15% difference in the battery life. And that's not bad when you think about it, because you're getting about 50% more CPU performance, as well as 100% more GPU performance. And when you're running efficiently, all you're gonna be doing is losing about 15% battery life. That's not too bad. Now I know this battery life test wasn't the most encompassing, it was pretty basic, but with how long these laptops last, it is really, really difficult to run multiple battery tests. And this is just the one that I thought would at least give me a clear example of which chips are running more wattage at any given time. Interestingly enough, I also ran my M2 Pro MacBook and it got eight hours and 27 minutes, which is just two minutes more than the M3 Max. So I thought that was pretty interesting that the M3 Max, the higher chip of this generation, lasted about equivalent to the M2 Pro, which was the lower chip of last generation. So choosing between these two devices, you're paying about 50% more for the Max chip. However, you're getting about 50% more CPU performance as well as 100% more GPU performance. So if you're in a situation where you're gonna be using a lot of GPU, I would say that the M3 Max can save you a lot of time. I saw about a 50% reduction in the time it took to export my YouTube videos and that's a lot. I'm talking about a five minute video taking half the amount of time. If you're looking at an hour or multi hour long video and you're cutting it down by half, that's a lot of time that's gonna add up and free up your computer to be doing other stuff. So yeah, if there's any tests that I didn't run that you wanna see, or if you didn't like how I ran some of these tests, go ahead and let me know in the comments. And if there's enough of a demand, I will go ahead and do a follow-up video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys there.